This video will cover Live Action's PFR V3 and IWAN capabilities, specifically in a failover scenario within the service provider network. Now, to be able to give you a good understanding of the topology here, this topology is made up of three separate sites San Jose on the left hand side. And that's represented with three separate routers. And this is your primary hub data center uh, site within the enterprise domain. And then also two other branch sites, Los Angeles, as well as New York. Now, these sites are interconnected by two service providers. The primary service provider is the MPLS network here and the Southern Link. Now, this is going to be carrying your critical applications and then also a backup service provider here represented by this internet link in the northern path. Now there's multiple types of application traffic running within this topology. Telepresence and voice, that's marked EF, and that shows up as this blue color going over primarily the MPLS link. As well as Citrix, marked AF31, and that's showing up as orange. There's also best effort traffic and scavenger traffic. That scavenger traffic is marked CS1, and that represents FTP traffic, and that's showing up in this purple color, going across primarily the internet link. Now, live action allows for network semantics. Now, what that really allows for is the end user being able to identify primarily sites, service providers, as well as capacities of the WAN links handing off to those service provider connections, along with many other things. Now, this really helps the end user make sense of the network domain and then to be able to further analyze what's going on within his network. Now, let's go ahead and think about how this failover is going to happen. I'm going to be inducing um, some impairments within the MPLS service provider network. So with this impairment, we're going to notice how all that critical application, telepresence and voice, migrates from this MPLS network over to the internet path, the backup path. I'm going to go ahead and turn on that impairment now. By double clicking on any one of these devices, it'll take you into the real time device view. And let's first take a look at the basic flow. This basic flow information is going to give you all the data of all the different types of application traffic ingressing and egressing this remote site in Los Angeles. Now we see different types of applications like FTP, ICMP, FTP, as well as Citrix, RTP, and Cisco Jabber as an example. Now this really helps you to think of it as a real-time device report of sorts. All of this is going to be updated very regularly. Now by going down to the PFR flow technology tab, we're actually looking at specifically PFR data coming from this router. And notice that one of these columns, or one of these rows rather, is showing up as red. The reason for this is we have alerts turned on within live action. By turning on the impairment within the MPLS network, PFR noticed that problem and sent off a threshold crossing alert. Now here we see that this row highlighted in red, notice that the deeper red is showing that there's high packet loss as well as byte loss occurring within the network. Now which service provider is being affected? We get that answer from this threshold crossing alert record. It's affecting the MPLS network, as we can see here. The traffic classes that are affected are those marked EF as well as AF31. So the telepresence and voice traffic is being affected right now, as well as Citrix. Along with this real-time alert that's showing up in the device view here in the Los Angeles branch, we also have in-application alerts. So notice that there's alerts showing up as red here on the bottom. By clicking on this alert button, it's going to bring up all the alerts that live action is collecting right now and noticing within the network. And notice that there's a large amount of packet and byte drops occurring within PFR. The reason for this again is because of that impairment impacting the quality of experience for the end user on that MPLS network. So let's take a look at how we can use these alerts to further troubleshoot what's going on within uh, the enterprise domain. 
by simply right-clicking on these alerts, it'll automatically open up a report that corresponds to the PFR issue that's going on. By clicking on that open report, we're bringing up the alerts by site pair. And notice we're zooming in on the site-to-site -site traffic from Los Angeles to San Jose. And notice right around 11.45 or so in the evening, we have a high number of loss incidents that are occurring. Now, perhaps we may want to get a better understanding of which applications are being affected by these alerts. Simply right-click drill down on that specific flow and let's take a look at alerts by application group. We're gathering that data. The applications that are affected are Citrix as well as Telepresence showing up in these two colors. Again the issue because of loss being affected in that service provider network. Now which service provider is it? we can get that data as well. So let's zoom in specifically on telepresence, right click, drill down, and then now let's go ahead and take a look at alerts by service provider. Let's bring up that report. Again, now we see and confirm that the MPLS network is having high packet loss as well as byte loss within its uh, service provider. Now that really helps you to drill down quickly when an alert comes up within the application, we can bring up and drill down alerts by sites, take a look at which applications are being affected, and which service provider is actually causing the issue. Now all of these alerts will show up in the application. It also could be emailed to the end user or sent off to a syslog server as well. Now let's take a look at another area that we can use within live action to further troubleshoot these issues. Now let's go ahead and bring up the dashboard. You can do that by clicking on this button here. I already have it up, so let's go ahead and take a look at that dashboard. This PFR dashboard specifically helps us understand what's happening on the WAN. We have alerts at this top portion, and then also we split up PFR into three primary areas. We're primarily interested in site data, application data, as well as the service provider performance. So we can see that each being shown in each of these rows below. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that top 10 alerts by site pair. By simply clicking on one of these widget headings, it'll bring up a report that corresponds to that graph. Now notice before we did have alerts earlier in the evening at about 10 p.m. And then finally also these alerts coming in right around 1130 or so, or a little bit after that. So all of that is because of impairments caused by loss events occurring within the network. Now again, this was just a simple workflow to drill down specifically from the dashboard into those reports. Now let's take a look further at being able to understand how that application was migrating from one service provider to another. We can look specifically at this application group bandwidth by service provider section within the dashboard. Now notice, for the last four hours, primarily scavenger traffic, well that's going over the internet path. Uh, the best effort traffic, well that's primarily also going over internet. Citrix and Telepresence Voice, well those were primarily going over the MPLS network, as you can see here shown in yellow. Now with that last event that occurred, that impairment in the MPLS network, let's see how we can troubleshoot how the particular application was migrating from one service provider link to another. So again, simply click on these dashboard headings to bring up a corresponding report. So here, over the last four hours, this is how all these applications were going over the various service providers, like Scavenger over Internet, Citrix over MPLS. Let's actually zoom in specifically on the last 15 minutes, the current window where we just set up that impairment. I'll go ahead and execute that report again. Let's zoom in specifically on telepresence traffic. I'm going to go ahead and apply, right click, and apply this to the search. Now notice how telepresence just now was being affected. It was primarily going over the MPLS link, which is the primary link, but then because of an impairment on the service provider, a brownout scenario, Notice right around 11.45 or so, it switched over from MPLS to the internet path, and that's showing up as yellow. 
So very quickly, we're able to see how the application was, uh, was protected by PFR migrating from the primary link to the secondary link to ensure the quality of experience for the end user. Now let's go back to live actions topology to take a look at how visually on the topology we can trace that telepresence traffic migrating from one link to the other. Again, let's go back to live action. Click on the home tab. So let's zoom in specifically on telepresence and voice. Primarily in the past, that traffic was going over the MPLS link, right? This was before the impairment occurred. Now by simply pressing refresh, we're going to be looking at all the flows right now. All these telepresence flows are now taking that secondary path over the internet service provider. Yeah. So very quickly, in just a matter of minutes, Live Action was able to help you by means of alerts, dashboards, reports, and be able to see exactly how your critical applications were being protected by PFR so that the quality of experience for the end user was ensured. Now by using PFR, Cisco's PFR, we see how it nicely uh, protects the critical application traffic and how live action is able to help the network engineer monitor these critical WAN links within the enterprise domain.